All right, welcome back to another fun-filled math session. Um, this is the last section that will be covered for Unit 4. Okay, so this is Section 3.7. 3.7 is going to discuss um, the details that you need to know in terms of doing what are called inverse functions. Now, an inverse function is just that. It is the inverse of your original function. And just like with everything, it has a special notation that you have to use. So for this, this is where we're looking at functions where you have this negative first power to the upper part of your function notation, and that is how we denote the inverse. Now this is really important because from this point forward when you are discussing an inverse it is very important that you have it labeled the proper way. Because if you remember just simply saying f of x means you're talking about a function. So now an inverse is that special type. Okay, It means that we are going to interchange your x and y values. Now when we're talking about ordered pairs, it's just as simple as that. You're going to interchange your x-coordinate with your y-coordinate and restate your function. So the inverse here is going to be the set where I'm going to invert my x and y's. Okay, So I'm going to interchange them. So this becomes 3, 2, it then becomes 5, 4, and the last one is negative 1, negative 2. So if you look for all of those coordinate points, I interchanged my x and y values with each other and then rewrote them. For equations, the same idea occurs, where you are going to interchange your x and y variables. So for example, if you have that the function of x equals 2x plus 3, then your inverse equation is going to interchange x and y. So this is going to become x equals 2y plus 3. And then in most of these cases, you would either then graph it, so you could graph it in this uh, state as it is, or you would resolve for y to find your inverse equation. Okay, and we're going to look at both of those. Now, there are a couple rules for graphing that we have to follow. Okay. First thing is, in order to graph, um, the fastest, easiest, um, and less hectic thing to do is going to be to create an xy table of your values and then you're going to graph those values. Now remember when we're talking about the inverse in this case you would be choosing y values in order to graph your x values. So in other words an inverse uh, function is also interchanging the um, dependent and independent rules that a normal function has. Okay. Now the other thing we have to keep in mind is we do have this thing right here that is called a reflection line. A reflection line is the line that allows you to tell the difference between your original graph and your inverse graph. A reflection line is just that. It is a reflection. So essentially, we have already talked in 3.5 about symmetry, where you would fold along the x-axis or the y-axis in order to look and see if your top matches your bottom or the left matches the right. Well, that same idea gets used with inverses. Only in this case, you would fold along your reflection line. And whatever is on the top of that line, so this top triangle here, has to match or mirror to the bottom. That's a reflection line. Okay. 
So this is going to become important when we start looking at examples and graphing your examples. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of those examples. All right. So here you are asked to graph the equation by plotting the points. Then reflect the graph across the line y equals x to obtain the graph of the inverse. Okay. Now, there's a very important thing that you need to note here, which is that you have to be able to find the points of your inverse that exist so that you can actually graph them. So it's not just about looking at a reflection line and graphing it. It is, however, about being able to find your points for the original graph and your inverse. So we have x squared plus 1. So the first thing that I would do is I would go ahead and graph it. Now, there's two ways we could do it. One, you could use all of that translation knowledge that we just gained out of 3.5. Or you can go ahead and shortcut yourself and make an xy table. So here we know that y is x squared plus 1. We're making a parabola because this is quadratic, so we're going to want to use um, at least 3 to 5 points. Remember, your goal is to have that change in direction. So the first thing that I would do is I would start with 0. And so here you're going to have 0 squared plus 1 which equals 1. And then I would go ahead and look at, all right, what happens if I use 1? So here I have 1 squared plus 1. Well, 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2. And now I would use negative 1 because if I find my um, change in direction, then I'm going to go ahead, I can be done. So here I would use negative 1 squared plus 1. Well, negative 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2. And so I have these three points, and I would go ahead and graph them and see if I found my change in direction. So here I've got the point 0, 1, so 0, 1. I then have the point 1, 2, so 1, 2. And I have the point negative 1, 2. So that's right there. So notice. I have my change in direction where my points come down and then they go back up. So that occurs right here. And so I would go ahead and just kind of graph this um, kind of the best you know way that you can. Just kind of making your best guess as to what it would look like. And so this right here is your y equals x squared plus 1 graph. Well, that is the original. Okay, so I want to make it really clear, this is your original function. And the question wanted you to graph the inverse as well. So to do that says that we need to create a new table. So if my original was y equals x squared plus 1, then the inverse would say I need to interchange my x and y, so this becomes x equals y squared plus 1. So now in this case, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a table that is y, and then it's going to be x equals y squared plus 1. So what I want you to notice here is that to create an xy table for inverses, you will be choosing the y 
values. Whereas for everything else, we usually choose the x values. But here, we're actually choosing our y values. And those y values are going to dictate what those x values are going to be. So inverses are the exact opposite of what we were doing. So notice here, my y column is what I'm going to choose. And it's what I'm plugging into to find my x value. So again, I would go ahead and start with 0. So this again becomes 0 squared plus 1 which is 1. And then I would look at what happens if y was 1. And so here I have 1 squared plus 1, which again gives me 2. And I would use negative 1. So I have negative 1 squared plus 1 gives me 2. Now, be very careful here, because these coordinate points are going to be different. So these, you need to pay attention to what was x and what was y. So in this instance, my x value is 1, my y value is 0. So this is actually the coordinate point 1, 0. For my second one, my x is 2, so this is 2, my y is 1. And for this bottom one, my x is 2, my y is 1. So here, I need to graph those points. So first, I have the point 1, 0. So I'm going to go over 1, but I'm not going to go up and down any. So this is my first point. And then I have the point 2, 1. So I'm going to go 1, 2, but up 1. And then I have 2, negative 1. So notice, I still have my change in direction. And so this is going to kind of go this way. And this part was going to kind of go this way. And so this right here is actually going to be that x is y squared plus 1, which is the inverse function. Okay. Now, I want you to look very carefully. If I were to fold the paper right here along this dotted line, notice my blue graph and my red graph would line up completely with each other. That is one of the ways that you can visually see that you have actually done this correctly. Because remember, inverses should be complete reflections of one another. Okay, And so that means that this xy reflection line would be the point of symmetry that we're looking for. That whatever is happening in this top has a direct mirror to what's happening in the bottom. They line up. Okay. So that's an example on graphing. Now, another concept that we have with inverses is called one-to-one -one functions. Okay. One-to-one -one functions have a definition. Okay. So one-to-one -one is just that. It means that your x value only maps or has one y value. So, we have this definition here that says, if A does not equal B, then F of A does not equal F of B. This follows with the definition that different inputs should have different outputs, meaning your X value or has only one uh, y value. Your input has only one output. Okay. Now, the other thing, or the other way that we like to look at our one-to-one -one definition is what happens if all the outputs are the same? Well, then all your inputs should be the same. So that is this definition here that says if my function of a is the same as my function at b, then it goes to show that my a equals b. Well, along with that, we do have some properties. In the properties state that if a function is 1 to 1, then the inverse is a function. 
Next, if the domain of a one-to-one -one function is the range of the inverse, and then the range of the one-to-one -one function will be the domain of the inverse. So again, we're still thinking about opposites. Now the last thing we have is that a function that is only increasing or decreasing over its entire domain is a one-to-one -one function. Okay. Now we do have a test um, like to use in order to determine if a function um, is one-to-one -one and therefore the inverse would be a function. And that is the horizontal line test. Okay. So the horizontal line test is as follows. Okay, so this is kind of like a horizontal line test right here. So the horizontal line test is virtually the same as the vertical test. The only difference is you're going to use a horizontal line instead of a vertical line. What this test does is it proves that your inverse is a function. Or it'll prove that your inbox, inbox, uh, inverse is not a function. Okay. So, look at this first example here. Okay. So notice that this right here is our graph. And this purple line that we dropped into it, that was the vertical line test that we used. Since this function passes the vertical line test, it is actually a function. Now, with this function, we want to know if its inverse is a function. So you're going to drop a horizontal line into your graph. So we did that right here. This is my pink line. And notice it's passing or um, hitting at three different points. Because it hits at those three different points, then this graph is not one-to-one. -one. Because it's not one-to-one, -one, it means the inverse is not a function. Now be very careful. That doesn't mean it doesn't have an inverse. It just means that the inverse is not considered a function. Okay. Now if we look at the middle one, you can see we've got this straight line here. So again, we've dropped that vertical line, which is going to prove that this uh, function is a true function, that this line is a function. So we pass that vertical line test. Now we want to know if its inverse is a function, which means we need to know if it's one-to-one. -one. So we drop that horizontal line in, which is this pink line here. And in doing so, we see that it only actually passes at one point. Now, it won't matter where we move that horizontal line. It's only ever going to pass at one point. Therefore, because it passes the horizontal line test, it is a one-to-one -one function. And since it is a one-to-one -one function, that means that the inverse is a function. Okay. Now, the last possibility that we may see is this third one. So here you can see we've got this graph and we drop our vertical line in here which is the purple line again and that vertical line tells us that this is not a function. Okay, It fails that test. However, we still have to check the horizontal. The horizontal here passes also at two points. Because it does that, it fails the horizontal test, which means the graph is not one-to-one. -one. Okay, so failing that vertical line test means that original equation was not a function. And because you failed the horizontal test, it means the inverse is not a function. Now, this horizontal test, again, remember, does not mean that you don't have a function, 
well that you don't have an inverse what it means is that your inverse was not a function okay now you have to be able to um, solve some problems and graph these concepts and ideas and for that it means that you have to be able to take a function or basically an equation and you have to be able to figure out one is it a function is it one-to-one -one? and then does it pass um, the horizontal line test okay if it does and if you find out for a lot of these that you do pass and you are one-to-one -one, then the problems asking you to actually find the inverse of the problem if you find out that you are not one-to-one -one, then your answer is no and you're done so here we have the function f of x equals 5x plus 8 okay so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out if it's one-to-one -one. and we do that by sketching its graph so to sketch its graph again I would choose an XY table and here because we're graphing the original we are choosing X values to dictate the Y values so I would start with 0 make life easy this becomes 5 times 0 plus 8 which leaves you with 8 and then I would go to 1 okay again do everything you can to make it easier on yourself so choose easy numbers this becomes 5 times 1 plus 8 well 5 times 1 is 5 plus 8 is 13 and thus you have your points okay now if you look on here this graph only actually goes to 8 so one thing that I would do is I would say okay I want to make sure that I have a point on my graph so let's just look at negative 1 so 5 times negative 1 plus 8 5 times negative 1 is negative 5 plus 8 gives me 3 well this one I know will show up so that should be good so I'm going to graph the first one and the third one okay so I have the point 0 8 so I'm up here it's 0 8 and then I have the point negative 1 3 so negative 1 1 2 3 and then I'm gonna go ahead and draw my line so I'm gonna go ahead and connect my dots here so draw my line in okay so there's my graph and now in order to prove one to one um, remember you have to check your horizontal line test to prove one-to-one -one function or not okay so here my horizontal line test says you're going to take a horizontal line and you're going to drop it in and make sure that it touches it only one place so if I drop a horizontal line in like right here what you'll notice is that it's only going to touch to the one spot and it doesn't matter where I move that horizontal line I can move it you know I could put it down here and if you look that only touched at one spot I could move it up here to the top and this touched it only one place it doesn't matter where that horizontal line moves I'm only ever going to touch it one place therefore this passes that horizontal line test which means yes it is a one-to-one -one function now the question said um, determine if it's one-to-one -one. if it is find the formula for the inverse so since this one's one-to-one -one, to find the formula we need to use these directions here which say first interchange X and Y then you're going to solve for Y 
And then you need to replace that Y with your proper notation. So we have Y is equal to 5X plus 8. So step one says to interchange X and Y. Okay. So if I do that, it means this becomes x equals 5y plus 8. Okay. So step 2 says we need to solve for y. So I have that x is my 5y plus 8. i got to subtract 8 from both sides, so x minus 8 equals my 5y. Divide everything by 5. So I have 1 fifth x minus 8 over 5 is equal to y. The third step says use your notation. So your third and final step says inverse notation. An inverse notation said you have to replace your y with f to the negative first. So this becomes f to the negative first of x is equal to 1 fifth x minus 8 over 5. Okay? And so that is everything you would have to do for this problem. Okay? So let's go ahead and look at another one. Now, I wanted to give you one that was kind of, would make you think a little bit more outside the box, but also to speed things up, I wanted to graph it for you, so I went ahead and did that. Okay. And if you look at it, you can notice that anywhere you were to drop your horizontal line into the actual function itself, you would pass it only, or you know, hit it only one place. So this one, um, yes, it's one to one because it passes your horizontal test. Okay. Now, specifically with this one. What matters the most is being able to find the inverse to this big fraction. And so we really wanted, wanted to show you. So we have that f of x is 5x minus 3 over 2x plus 1. Okay. So if you remember your steps, okay, the first step said to interchange x and y. So we're going to do just that. So this is going to become x equals 5y minus 3 over 2x, or sorry, 2y huh, plus 1. Okay. So this little mistake here is a perfect example on why you need to make sure that you slow down and do these problems with care because it is very easy to make a little goof which is then going to change your entire problem. Now that second step said that we need to solve for y. Okay. The one thing that I don't want to see happen is I don't want to see any of you make the statement that it does not exist or it's not solvable. This is very much solvable. And so we're going to go through exactly how that is. And we're going to go through it kind of slow. So again, we start out with the fact that x is my fraction. 5y minus 3 over 2y plus 1. First thing we need to do is we need to work on getting y all by itself. Well, in order to even think about that, we need to get rid of our fraction. We get rid of the fraction by cross-multiplying. OK? 
Okay. So here we're going to take what's on the bottom and we're going to bring it up over to the other side. So this is going to become x times 2y plus 1 equals 5y minus 3. Now this problem is going to get ugly before it gets nice. So I need to take this and I'm going to distribute the x through these parentheses here. So this becomes 2yx plus x equals 5y minus 3. Now we're going to do a little jazz with our, um, or I guess you could call it a little magic with our algebra. And we are going to move this 5y over. So we're going to subtract it from both sides. But then at the same time, we are going to move the x over by subtracting it from both sides. So when we do all of that, we have 2yx minus 5y is equal to negative x minus 3. we at this point can pull out a common GCF. Notice in both of these I have a Y. So I want to pull him out. So this becomes a Y. Leaves behind 2X minus 5 is equal to negative X minus 3. Last thing we need to do is get Y by itself. So Y is equal to negative x minus 3 and then I need to divide it by my parenthesis which is the 2x minus 5. Notice my y is completely by itself now which means that third step is inverse notation. Remember, inverse notation says replace y with f to the negative first of x is equal to my rational, negative x minus 3, all over 2x minus 5. And that was everything you needed to do on this problem. Okay? All right, let's look at another one. All right, so here I have 4x squared plus 3. And notice I've given a direction here. I'm telling you that we only want to look at x being greater than 0 or equal to 0. Okay. So why is that? Well, what happens if we ignore the direction? Well, ignoring the direction says that we're going to create a table, an xy table, where x is 4x squared plus 3. And we would say graph it like normal. Okay, so again, we might start with 0. So this would be 4 times 0 squared plus 3, which gives you 3. And then we might look at 1. So here, you're going to have 4 times 1 squared plus 3. So 1 squared is 1 times 4 is 4 plus 3 gives you 7. And then we might look at negative 1. So we would have 4 times negative 1 squared plus 3. So again, negative 1 squared is 1 times 4 is 4 plus 3 is 7. And then just like before, we would go ahead and we would graph this equation. And so we would graph that we have the point 0, 3, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 
so right here. And then we're over at 1, 7, so over 1 up to 7. And then we have negative 1, 7. And so we were looking at um, this graph that kind of comes up sharp, but it goes right like this. And this was the graph we're looking at. Now, if you remember, the first thing said that we have to check for one-to-one -one functions. And we do that by using the horizontal line test. So if we ignore that direction completely and you drop your horizontal line test in here, what happens is your horizontal line test fails. So since your test fails, this would be not a one-to-one -one function. Okay, so the direction here is what's called a restricted domain. So restricted domain says that you are going to force a function to become one-to-one -one by only using part of the function. Okay, essentially you are using the part of the function that passes the H test. Okay, that's what a restricted domain is. A, restricted, a restricted domain is essentially your direction that is causing you to have a one-to-one -one function. Okay, so in the case of our parabola here, we had a restricted domain that said we want to use x being greater than or equal to zero. Well, to do that it says that we are only going to look at say this part of my table. So that means we are starting at zero and we're only looking at this side, the green side. We're ignoring the other side. And because of that, you can see that now we pass the horizontal line test, provided that your restriction stays in place. Since my restriction causes me to pass the test, okay, so with restriction, the function passes the H test, we can find the inverse. So again, the inverse says that you have to interchange X and Y. So now we're going to have that X equals 4Y squared plus 3. That next part says we need to solve for y. Again, we're going to do this nice and slow. So we have to get y by itself. So this becomes x minus 3 equals 4y squared. we got to divide everything by 4. So x minus 3 over 4 equals y squared. And then to undo a square, we have to take the square root. So here, we're going to end up with the square root of x minus 3 over 4 equals y. That very last step we have says that we have to use 
inverse notation. Inverse notation, again, remember, says f to negative 1 of x is the square root of x minus 3 divided by 4. And that is what we would be looking for. Now, if we did not restrict this domain, then you would not have an inverse to solve for per the directions that you have been given. Okay. Okay, let's look at another here. This direction says, determine if the following functions have inverse functions. If not, then suggest a domain to restrict the functions so that it would have an inverse function. Okay. So my function here is x minus 2 cubed minus 1. So here we have to look at, if we graph this, do we get a function? So I wanted to go ahead and graph it ahead of time. And so I've got this graph here. now. I use Desmos, um, D-E-S-M-O-S dot com, in order to do this. It's a really great resource if you're wanting to be able to check your graphing work and see how you're doing. Um, so in here, you can see that I've got the dotted line, um, the darker one, this one right here is going to be my function okay so this one right here is your original and if you look at it you can see that no matter where you were to put your horizontal line you are going to pass the horizontal line test so for this problem it's very simple you would graph your function like we did here. So create your xy table to graph it. And then you'd have to look at does it pass or not. So your question says to determine if the functions will have inverse functions. So in other words, what you have to do first is you have to determine if the function is one to one. Okay. The second step is if yes, then you're done. If no, then you need to restrict the domain to make one to one. So this example is not actually getting at determining or finding the inverse function. It is just getting at whether or not you are able to look at a function and use the definition for inverse functions to be able to determine if your function will work as is or if you have to restrict your domain. So here for this one, the answer is... is um, as simple as being able to say that yes it is one to one thus yes the inverse has a function or is a function however you wanted to conclude it okay now what if I gave you something like this one, where I tell you that you have the absolute value of h minus 12? Well, what do we know about absolute values? Well, what we know, are these are v's. Okay, so notice that's what this is. This is my original, the original function. 
And so if you notice here, it is a V, okay? And this point is going to be at that point, um, 12, 0, which should make sense based on your function itself. And so it's a V. So if we use the horizontal line test, notice if I drop a horizontal line into here, if I drop it anywhere, I'm passing it at two points. Because I'm passing it two points, that means that no, this function will not have an inverse as it fails the horizontal line test. Therefore, we have to restrict the domain. So the problem wants you to actually restrict that domain. So if you look at this graph, we have to look at what part of the graph can I use in order to create a function that would pass the test. Well, my vertex point or center point is here at the point 12, 0. So if I'm restricting the domain, okay, it means I need to restrict to either x greater or equal to 12, or x less than or equal to 12. Either one of those domains would give you the right answer. And thus, that's all you needed to do. So you would have to be able to state what would you make that domain restriction to in order to um, cause your inverse to be a function. Okay. So that's it. That kind of sums it up. That's everything that you need to know out of inverse functions. Okay. Um, all the different concepts that you may be asked for um, in terms of your problems and all of the content. And this also then wraps up everything that you need to be able to do out of uh, this fourth unit. Okay. So as always, uh, please remember to keep filling out that discussion board as we go, especially if you have any questions that come up. Um, and as always, you know, enjoy your math, and we will see you next time.